Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We hope everybody had a, a great 4th of July weekend. We did here in Waikiki. In Waikiki, we have the Outrigger Canoe Races, where Outrigger Canoe teams from all over uh, the islands show up, even some international to show up. And they just take over Waikiki Beach and they do all kinds of different races. And it's, what's interesting is, uh, you know, when you at surf contests, there's all layer, levels of families that surf. Uh, but in Outrigger Canoe Contest, it's true that all levels of families, the children, the mother, the father are all involved. But instead of surfing out there as individuals, they're all going out there as a team uh, to win for the team. And so it's really exciting to see each of the Outrigger Canoe Clubs just all cheering on their team and uh, all getting in the boat and all paddling together and that's what we want to do as as christians and as catholics is to get in that boat the bark of peter and all ho'o'olei paddle together uh strongly and cheer each other on and we got one of our 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 most returning guest on our show our, one of our original guests jason jones uh will be, be joining with us in a, just a few moments we'll talk to you we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, it's the 4th of July weekend uh, that just came past us, and uh, it's a weekend when we think about uh, patriots and we think about heroes. And I was thinking about, you know, I was fortunate enough to be in Greece following in the footsteps of St. Paul, and I went to a little area called Thermopylae where 300 Spartans uh, battled for over a day and held off thousands of, um, of their enemy. Uh, it's amazing what 300 valiant, determined people can do, a small group of people can do. And then I've been, I've been able to go to the valley where uh, Gideon uh, and his army fought, and his 300 men fought uh, and won a great victory for the Lord. And just amazing what a small band of, of brothers, of, of, of men and women, really, we should say, that are, that are devoted, not just committed, but devoted deep in their heart, not just so much as an act of will, but just an act of devotion uh, to the Lord and be willing to make a stand for God and what 300 people can do, uh, a small band of brothers can do. And and so we have with us today Jason Jones, who I think stands strong like a, a Spartan or is one of the men of Gideon, uh, Gideon's army, who, who always stands up, always makes a stand, is always kind of at the forefront when there's something, when there's an injustice being done and rallying the troops and calling, calling people to... Uh, to uh, to make a stand, you know, there, there's there's one there's such a thing as as uh, making a stand. There's one another thing as as you know stepping into the breach and rebuilding the breach, but there's also such a thing as taking new ground. And Jason always seems to be at the forefront taking new ground. So, Jason Jones, welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Very kind, Bear Wozniak. It's great to see you. I miss you. Don't you have to say boy howdy now that you're in Texas? Boy howdy, and I don't culturally appropriate. You don't call, oh, you don't. That's so funny. <laughs> so uh, you, I can't do that. So you're not one bodacious cowboy yet? Well, then why are you wearing that cowboy hat? I'm not wearing a, I'm not wearing a cowboy Let's hat. Let's see. What do you got? I have this, oh, though. Oh, man. He's got some sort of... Oh, that, that looks like you were in the Ukraine recently. Is that Ukraine? No, yeah. No, this is from... I was wearing this in Ukraine, but that's actually an Afghanistan flag. But I can replace it. This is where all the countries we work. And look at this flag we have, too. We had this made. Uh, what is that? The vulnerable oh, Hawaii, Hawaii nay. The vulnerable, so I was wearing the vulnerable the people project. In Ukraine, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> they thought it was Britain. Bishop, no, this bishop saw the bottom, which is what? Hawaii. Russia. No, yeah, no, oh. but the bottom. This Canadian this this uh Ukrainian bishop, Catholic bishop, was told me, take that off. We don't want those colors around here. I said it's Oh the, the colors of it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, we already skipped. You know, speaking of these three hundred, there's a new book out that you're mentioned in. It's I think it's called the Legacy of Life. It's about the fifty, fifty people have, who have made the most impact. Fifty heroes have, who have made the most impact in the uh, in the pro life movement. Uh, and I and I know that you're uh, you are um, featured in that book. So what those those fifty people and other, so many others have stood with them. What 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 an honor for you to be in that book. 
Yeah, I just found out um, when the family policy, um, uh, Florida Family Policy Institute put it together with Ben Shapiro and John Stenberger. And it's, I guess they polled the pro-life movement and pro-life leaders of who are the most consequential leaders. And it is an honor to be in it. It's kind of like a family album. I, it's in yeah. the mail. I haven't, even, I haven't even received it yet, but I do know a lot of the names. I looked at some of the names and so many of them are, are my friends or my friends who passed away, like Dr. Wilkie, um, Norman McCorvey, who was a role of Roe v. Wade. And uh, so for me, it is a real honor to be in this book because I feel like I'm in a book with all my friends um, and mentors and heroes. But at the same time, the pro-life movement is really a leaderless movement. It's the largest, most diverse social movement in the history of the world. And so you really, it doesn't do justice. There are, there are countless pro-life leaders. In fact, I was interviewed about being in the book by John Zmerich at the stream. Mm. And I mentioned all the pro-life leaders in our home state of Hawaii that were very influential in my life. Um, Mike and Carol Gabbard, um, Steve Hulk, um, Garrett Hashimoto, Bob Matsumoto, there were two, Andy Blum, there's too many names, Representative Mark Moses and Mayor Frank Fossey, there were too many names to mention, really. And so it's it's a movement of, of leaders. And um, but at the same time, I'm it is a privilege to be in the book because books live for until our Lord returns. And mm -hmm. I'll get to live in this book until our Lord returns next to people who I've admired greatly. Mm. We know that you uh, also have been involved. Uh, you, you're, you're great friends with Eduardo, Eduardo and the makers of this new film on uh, human trafficking. Uh, what is the name? Of it? It's with, with Jim Caviezel, who I know you well. Sound of you Freedom. Well it's shattering box office records. Um, unbelievable. I, I've heard reports all across the country that it was outselling the new... Um, new Disney, I bet. Indiana Jones. Yeah. And by the way, I, the new Indiana Jones movie was great. I thought it was great. But uh, Sound of Freedom, I had the privilege of seeing it before years ago, before COVID, when it was finished. And with God's perfect timing, it came out now. And it really it stars Jim Caviezel. It's a guy named Tim Ballard who... The real person. Um, yeah, it's a real story. The real guy. Let me tell you about Tim. I, I thought about this recently. I've been around Tim quite a bit. And I've never seen a guy smile. Hmm. And that's how I know he's the real deal. You see the weight of the pain. You know, he's rescued countless children from human sex traffickers. And when you see the look in his eyes... And you see even his smiles are forced and pained. Uh, pained. I, I think that tells you all you need to know about him and the work that he does. So this movie is great. You know, it's it's really unbelievable in the, era, the age that we live in that we cannot put an end to the sexual exploitation of children. It's really quite unbelievable. Um, but that's, that's where we are. And so, yeah, um, Alejandro Monteverdi is the director, Eduardo's the producer. It's the same guys that made Bella with me and Crescendo with me. And um, they're my dear friends. And so I'm so, so proud of them. And uh, but yet there's a movie that this movie is very powerful and has a very important message. But they have another movie coming out soon called Cabrini on Mother Cabrini. And bear, this is not hyperbole. It is probably the best Catholic movie of all time. I would put The Passion of the Christ in its own category because it's a work of art. I'd mm -hmm. say The Passion is one of the most beautiful works of art in the history of the human family. Um, but this movie Cabrini is unbelievable. I definitely, it's right up there with like, for example, The Mission, if you remember mm -hmm. that great mm -hmm. Catholic movie, The Mission. So um, I can't wait till that film comes out, but yeah, I'm so proud of these guys and they're they're very brave. And what I was gonna be announcing soon it's no secret that he'll be running for president of Mexico to take on the cartels and the human traffickers and sex traffickers. So, um, who will be? You know, uh, Eduardo. Really? Eduardo. Yeah. No kidding. Wow. Okay. You talk about this team of 300. All of my friends, you, you know, and Eduardo and Jim Caviezel, um, they're just embattled little warriors. There's not a lot of us. And it's very hard. And there's a lot of naysayers and people who doubt you along the way. And it takes a very long time, especially in the film business. This movie, they felt probably like failures for the past three years because COVID killed the film, mm. but they were tenacious. And now they're changing box office history. So um, I was listening to, I was going to, you know, my hobby is Muay Thai kickboxing. 
and I was you like to, to you like to hurt people, but with their permission. No, I, I I do love I do love today we did technical sparring. I'm so happy, so I have a big smile on my face because I had I had a knee injury, mm. and so I was able to really spar for six months. I'd have surgery, um, but just past two weeks or three weeks, I've been able to go back in the gym and train. And today was the first day I really attempted to spar, but I was listening to Musashi. Um, the Book of Five Rings on my way to the gym, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and you were talking about Thermopylae and the Spartans. <clears throat> Musashi talks about warriors coming from a house. And I always think of myself as part of, you know, we are warriors for Christ. Um, when he said that they come from a house, I thought I call my hero family, the people who work for my nonprofit, the Human Rights Education and Relief Organization. Our two programs with Vulnerable People Project and Movie to Movement. I call it the Hero Hale. Oh, that's cool. So when when they work for us and they leave and they go on and work other places, they're still always a part of the Hero Hale because you can bet they get calls from me asking me to help for help on things. We, 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 we got to take a break. Uh, Hale in Hawaiian means house. Uh, and you think about that, like the House of David, you know, the great valiant warriors that came from that house. Uh, hopefully, um, one day Jason and I will be able to stand before the Lord and 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 maybe. Maybe, maybe uh, be in the company of King David and talk story with him. Hopefully we, fought, we have fought, fought the good fight. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Ad Adventure. We're talking with my good friend Jason Jones. Uh, Jason, you were talking about um, uh, just just the need for it. Do it doesn't take. It's like like little. We're talking about King David and the House of David. You know, King David was. Um, just a boy when he was anointed king, and he took on Goliath, you know. And and then you think of Caleb when the when the when the promised land was first conquered, there was one area when all the tribes of Israel had gone in that had yet remained wasn't quite conquered yet. And Joshua asked Caleb, "What what area do you want?" And he goes, "Well, I'll take that area called Gath. That was a place of giants." And so don't be afraid, uh, uh, men and women, to take to be to step forward and take on the giants. And to think think of this. The, the, the house of David for many years was a cave. <laughs> he, he lived in a cave called the Cave of Adullam. And who, who was gathered there? It was a bunch of misfits. It was a bunch of men who owed money or running from the law, or I like to say maybe running from their mother-in-law. 
But g- God gathered them there, and they formed each other into being, and, and God formed them into being the, the, the David's valiant men of God. And so that's what we. Are, that's why I have Jason on the show so often, because he's like a he's like a shofar. He's like a ram's horn, calling men, rallying men and women uh, to the front. And you don't have to be, um, you don't have to be super gifted. You don't have to have any any great um, you know abilities. Um, you just need to have a willing heart, and God will. And you don't even have to be perfect. God will form you on the battleground. So t- tell us more about you know this the. Let's talk a little bit more about human trafficking because I know you've been fighting that fight too, and then I want to talk with you about when you you know your your trips. Yeah, it's hard. To you know, we were working on a documentary in Hawaii for a long time, and it got, it's got to be too dangerous and too close to home. Um, and I've worked on several films on trafficking, and um, it's depressing and it's hard work and it's real. And so the courage that these gentlemen have to make this film, and that Jim Caviezel and Mel Gibson lent their voice to this project um, and that Eduardo poured his life into this. Uh, it tells you a lot about who these guys are because every time you talk to Eduardo now or Tim Ballard now, they talk about stopping the sexual exploitation of children, stopping the sexual exploitation of children. And that's one of the reasons why Eduardo's running for president of Mexico. And I think that the success of this film really is going to generate a lot of support for his campaign. But you have to know, like the cartels are very powerful. Yeah, there's a, the whole new cartel in town too, right? They, yeah, and so Eduardo is going to be taking on some very dangerous folks, um, but he's very brave and and um, and that, and that's what I was thinking when I was listening to Musashi talking about these houses of these lords. Well, we live in our Lord's house, right? Pray God that, that we are in His house, and we go out not as soldiers, um, but we go out as Christians. We go out as men who are willing to. Um, serve the poor, the weak, the leper, and what a great privilege! You know, if you could be anything in the world, that like, that's what I would want to be. Is I would want to be a servant of the poorest of the poor, the weakest of the weak, the sickest of the sick, and in, in in a real way, that's the vocation of every Christian. And we can do it in our families through through caring with our family members and friends and neighbors who struggle with things, um, or just going to play board games at hospice or at the old folks' home with the folks, or going to do prison ministries. There's um, and I know in, in all of us, you know, there's seasons in our life where it takes 20 hours a week to keep our pizza shop open, you know, and you're not going to even have an, an instant for for that prison ministry. But that's when you write that that check to your local um, pregnancy center and, and you support that the work of the local pregnancy center that we all can either do or donate. And I, and I think that is the vocation of the Christian. And that's what it is to live in our Lord's house. Um, and then you look at this film and how it's changing the world like it's. Just like Bella, Bella really changed the pro-life movement. A lot of people may not remember, it was our first film, um, Bella, and it came out, won the biggest film festival in the world, and it started the phenomena of pro-life films. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, Bear, that I'm always at the front. That's sort of my goal. Like, I was the first person uh, arrested protesting COVID policies Mm -hmm. in the United States. I remember, yeah. I launched the Film Your Hospital Mm -hmm. movement. Once a movement was generated there, I left that didn't need me. And I went to Afghanistan to evacuate the vulnerable in Afghanistan. And we're still there. Why are we still there? Because sadly, no one else showed up. You know, no one else is there. We are, as I was talking to you on, on this interview, I can see my signal app pinging, pinging, pinging from Afghans who are our former allies that are in, in emergency situations. But sort of the mission of the Vulnerable People Project is to stand with the most vulnerable people in the world when the world is left. I, I don't want to be, you know, I was just reading this. I never thought of this before, but I've said this for years. I don't want to be with our Lord on um, Palm Sunday. I don't like crowds. I'll be, I'll be fishing. I'll be out. I'll be out mm. on the lake because no one's going to be on the lake. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't want to be with. I don't need to be with our Lord on during the Last Supper. I'll, I'll eat a falafel at home alone. I'm good with that. I want to be with our Lord on the cross. And I was just reading. Um, I think it was in the introduction to the devout life by St. Francis. I don't remember, but where it said our blessed, the blessed mother was not at the last supper. Mm. She was not there on Palm Sunday, Mm. but she was at the cross. Mm. I was like, Whoa, you know, I'm very Marian. I never thought of that before. 
And that's that's where I want to be. I want to be with our Lord on the cross. So, you know, that's why I was in Ukraine. Um, that's why we're in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Nigeria, um, standing with the vulnerable Catholics as they're facing uh, a horrible uh, violence. Well, nine out of 10 Christians murdered this month in the world will be murdered in Nigeria. It's, it's just, really quite sad. Like we're talking with Jason Jones. Uh, filmmaker and uh, pro-life advocate, and really just a just someone who always steps between danger and and the vulnerable. And his your website, the best way for people to reach you, it's thegreatcampaign.org. Thegreatcampaign.org. And we recommend you go there and get you know get Jason to speak because his speaking uh, schedule is pretty tight. But if you're fortunate enough, you can get get through to him at Great. What is it again? The website. Uh, the great campaign.org st john paul the great asked us to launch a great campaign mm -hmm. in defense of life so in the 90s i bought this domain i wasn't even catholic yet <laughs> yeah that's right i remember yeah and everyone's tried to buy this domain from me over the past 30 years like avon and everyone else but when i had read evangelium vitae um the gospel of life as an as an agnostic at the time i was drifting from atheism to agnosticism on my way to the church but i had read evangelium vitae and when he said we need to marshal our energies in a, with the same force and seriousness to defeat the culture of death that we used to defeat communism and fascism. I said, yeah, I like that. And I bought that domain. And so everything I do, my movies, my writing, my podcasts, it all fits in this idea that it's just a campaign. And, 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 and a campaign, campaign traditionally is, is you think about the Crusades. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's going into battle. And that takes yeah. uh, that takes um, that takes a plan. It takes, and I know that when you were what twenty years old, you wrote up you wrote up a plan to end abortion in your lifetime. Was it what? what how old were you when you wrote up wrote up that? Plan? I was I was nineteen. You I went, was in the you, army. Yeah, you went to your sergeant, I guess, or captain, or who did you? My captain called me in <laughs> and heard that I was harassing civilians about abortion, and uh, he asked me. I told him, "Yeah, I'm going to end abortion." He said, by going door to door in Wahiwa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my plan. He said, you need a better plan, you know? And he said, give yourself 40 years. And I mapped out this 40 year plan. He said, start with your goal and then ask yourself who can do that and how? And then say, how do you become that person and take one step back? And then work yourself all the way back till you reach the worst soldier in my company, you Jones. And then and just spend the rest of your life working it forward. And you know, bear as I'll say to people, I have dyslexia, whatever that is, you know, that's a pain. I have ADHD, which to me is nothing. It's just a superpower, but it's a superpower that makes being con conventional or working in a conventional workspaces or sitting at a desk in a public school quite difficult. Um, but for the work I do, I, th I see it as like a, a secret ingredient. Um, but I had this plan that I'm gonna learn how to write. I'm gonna learn how to be a public speaker. I am going to learn how to influence people and I set out to do it, and I, that plan I put that I'd write. You put it in writing. Made. You know, what, Jason. I, in yeah. my new book, uh, it's coming out any month now. I think it's September. Twelve rules uh, for manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? I, I I write like as if I'm a father speaking to his son. It's like this is the real stuff I'm giving you here. And one yeah. of them I tell them to do is 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 you know really discern your gifts, the skill set, the the desires that you have, not your passions. That's more of a drivenness, but but the, the upward yearnings that you have, and then 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 write down just a list of 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 wild things that you could do that you might that you might want to do. It, write write everything down. The, don't don't judge them. Just no matter how wild they are, like your your thing, you know, going to work to end abortion in forty years, and write those down, and then begin to pray on them, and then choose a few of those, and y you have to write out a plan. If you don't have a plan, what do they say? Fail to plan is planning to fail. I have the. I'm looking right now at five blue ring binders that are on my other desk. Every one of those binders is is a, is something that you and I call. I think you coined the phrase Holy Spirit action plan. It's a dream that I had or a thought that I had that during prayer usually that I think about. I develop Here's it. Mine. There's yours right there. Yeah, I actually, actually these books here. You just set up a leather book. This is my brown journal, right? So it starts with me writing in, in journals, and I have about 20 of these now. I just opened up a new one today. Well, during prayer or with my thoughts, I'll just write down random things. Then I'll go back and discern on those, and then they become my blue, my, my blue notebook, my three-ring binder, and then they become a TV series or a radio show 
But I want to encourage people out there, if you have an inkling, a sense that God's leading you, then sit down and pray it through and write out a plan and, and set, set, set some action dates and get rolling. <laughs> we've, over, we've overrun this segment. We'll be right back with more of Jason Jones. And what is your website again, Jason? TheGreatCampaign.org. This is Daniel LaBoon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Death. Some folks frequently walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I suppose I've brushed death more than most and less than some others. At the tender age of 12, I pulled my cousin, age 10, out of the cold water of the Columbia River. He was a goner. I wept. A year later, my pa, who had just turned 58, died from his third heart attack. I watched him heaving for air on his deathbed. That weren't pretty. Worked as a deckhand on the Columbia River Bar, the graveyard of the Pacific. The Grim Reaper had me in his crosshairs more than once. It was from the same waters as a young man I wrestled three bodies out of the pounding surf on Benson Beach. As a pastor, I was often called to folks on their deathbed. I learned to look forward to those times, strange as that may seem. As death comes close, folks get serious-like about themselves, their lives, and eternity. One such time was with an old farmer by the name of Bob Fredenberg. Now, Bob was a crusty old codger. Whenever he came to town, he was wearing that same pair of tattered and dirty coveralls, always with a servant of cow manure on at least one of his boots. Talk with a loud nasally twang, never a sentence lacking a cuss word or two. I was straight with Bob that day about death and eternity. Bob opened his heart to the Lord that day. As he did, Bob's demeanor in the room changed from the cold power of death to the glow of godly light. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak uh, Adventure. We're here with Jason Jones, a good, really good friend of mine. I'm honored uh, to call him a friend. Uh, and we were talking just now about the importance of, of having a plan. When he was 19 years old, he, uh, he was going door to door, knocking on doors, uh, at, you know, trying to end abortion. And his captain sat him down. And at that time, I think Jason said he was the worst. He, he told you you were the worst member of his of his. Uh, of his squad or of your uh, his company, your, yeah. your company. I had five. I had five Article 15s at that point. <laughs> yeah. So so he was going for the record, but but he said, you know, you're you're not going anywhere if you don't write down a plan. And so I encourage you, <clears throat> young men, young women, and 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 those of you especially that are seasoned, and maybe even at a retirement age. That's not that's not a, an age for you to stop. Uh, being productive that's when you can be most produ- productive because you got all the skills and maybe the resources and uh and uh and you've got the time t- 
to be to make a difference. Uh, maybe it's uh, like Mark Hawk goes down every Thursday and prayers in front of a praise in front of a Planned Parenthood uh, building. Make a plan and then activate it and be faithful to it and watch the Lord begin to open doors for you. And we also, Cindy and I, every morning, I always pray, Lord, may her wildest dreams come true. You know, we go down to the beach, we pray the litter to the hours, we take a swim. And, uh, but I pray for her that her wildest dreams will come true. And then I pray for God to order our day, to order our day and to open doors and close doors. So Jason is in the habit of, of wanting to sh- uh, shut, shut doors in the face of Moloch and Baal, the demon god of, of, of pornography and, uh, and abortion and sex trafficking. But also you open a lot of doors uh, with your movies. You open up a lot of hearts to people. Uh, but now I want to ask you, if you don't mind, we can, we can continue to talk about uh, the work that's being done. Uh, well, let me just ask you this before we talk about the work that's going on in the Ukraine. Can you give a few practical things that the everyday family can do in the area to, to, to be alert to sex trafficking and how to protect their own family members? Yeah, you know, number one is there's a lot of organizations that I think aren't very serious, right? So you got to find a local organization that uh, does the little things, the very important things like women's shelters, um, domestic abuse shelters, um, pr- crisis pregnancy centers. Believe it or not, these are the best places to start if you want to serve women that are trapped. Uh, if, if you see an organization that tries to lure you in with, the idea that you're going to become a Green Beret or Navy SEAL or kind of adventure tourism or adventure missionary work, I would avoid those. Uh, a buddy of mine told me yesterday he's a bodybuilder. He's like on he's a he was like on the board of directors of the IFBB, you know, the big bodybuilding uh, federation, and he's a very successful entrepreneur, the hardest working, most creative guy I've ever met. And he said, Jason, you know what the difference between success and failure is? A successful person and a failure. So what's that? He goes, a successful person was willing to do the small things that the, that the failure was not willing to do. And so that goes with trying to protect children in your community and other victims of sexual exploitation is to do those small things. We're not all going to make undercover documentaries or narrative feature films or kick down the doors of brothels in Colombia, but we could all support the pregnancy centers in our community we can all support the women's shelters in our community. Um, and, and that's, we can all work with our migrant communities uh, through our churches, because these are the communities where the exploitation is most likely to happen. The very small things, and day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, find out what your apostolate is. I think the great thing about that plan there is I have noticed, and you and I joke, of our our dealings with a guy that was kind of awkward and strange calling us daydreamers. And he was sort of out of, with envy, to be honest, to us. Like, I saw that. And he didn't realize that we were the guys willing to do the small things. Mm. Um, and you've been doing the show now for since, like, the week after I met you. I think I was your first guest. Yeah, I think, yeah that's right. And uh, it's been a long time. And that's a lot of hard work. And you did it through battling with cancer and your son's battle with cancer. You had a million reasons to quit. You had a million reasons to shelve this. Um, But you didn't. You did it day in and day out, week in and week out. That's the apostolic life. You found out what it was you were to do. Everyone, there's something we're all called to do. Whether it's just getting your children and your, and not just, I mean, getting your husband and children to help. Yes, Um, amen. That's a full-time apostolate. So once you know what your apostolate is, you don't have to look at what other people are doing. You're not going to feel envy. And then when you have that plan, well, you're not going to feel insecure. One of the things I hate most, Bear, I don't know if you ever run into this, but with the work we do, um, especially in the past two years, we've gotten a lot of coverage. You know, we just rescued some more nuns from Sudan. We've just been doing a lot of things that get media attention that are kind of striking. But really, it's just a fruit of doing a lot of little things. We, you know, I say to my team, we don't do anything big. We do small things in order. That's it. And um, and then I'll meet somebody who has a beautiful local apostolate. And you can sometimes see there's, um, oh, I wish I could do something like you. And I'm like, brother, what you're doing in your town? That's the real stuff. Young man in your town? Mm-hmm. That's thick. I'm a thin. I'm thin. Your right. apostolate's deep-rooted. Right. Thick. Beautiful. And this is the thing. So once you know what it is your apostolate, 
My apostle is my apostle because of the nature of my work. What happened to me with the abortion? What happened to me in the military? These experiences. And that's how my apostle fell on my shoulders. And all of us will have our apostle fall on our shoulders. But yeah, and once you know what it is your apostolate, you're not going to look um, at what other people are doing and go, oh, I wish I could do that. No, you're going to be, what is the next small task I have to do in front of me? I'm going to do the next small task. This is that. That's all we have to do. Right. Oh, I have to bring joy in my home. Okay, so today I'm going to plant a rose bush. Whatever it is, the small things, those are the big things. I loved how my buddy put it. And it also takes humility. If you're willing to do the small things, that's humble. I once had an employee who told me he didn't want to do these small tasks. I said, he liked doing the big things. I said, well, then you're fired. <laughs> like you yeah. can be a volunteer and choose what you want to do, but the yeah. small tasks are where it's at. You know, and Jesus said, if you're, sm if you're faithful in small things, I'll give you charge over greater. And it really is, it, it really is. I saw, I saw, had it start an interesting quote. It was a really cool quote. I forget what film it was on. <clears throat> but the re but the the statement was how you do how you do uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. In other words, I forget what film this was, but in other words, if when if you're paying attention to the small things, you'll also bring that same quality to task for the bigger things, or whatever you're doing. If you're doing the task that is on scene, well then the visible thing you will do well too. So basically, I, I remember a training in martial arts with Master Stephen Hayes, who the first white ninja who I know is how we, how we first really connected because he was a hero of yours too. And I remember uh, Master Hayes saying similar things, that, that um, the way he walks, the way he sits down in a chair, the way he takes care of that his penman of his penmanship, it's the, it's the small things being done, being done with a poetic, beautiful, uh, approach and almost an artistic approach uh, that when you take care of those little things then that that transfers into e into everything so be faithful in small things and God will give you charge we got a minute uh, before we got to take our break Jason Jones um, is with us uh, his his uh, website is what again Jason the great campaign dot org okay you got a couple minutes go ahead Jason Oh, I was just gonna say I was listening to the, the, I was listening to the Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto Musashi, the, the, Japan's greatest swordsman uh, from like the 16th century, and he talked about that. He said the good farmer, the good carpenter would make great samurai because they all have the same skill set. The good farmer, the good carpenter, and the good samurai um, pays attention to every detail, does everything to the best of their ability. And, and that's what you're saying. I, you know, or as my football coach used to say, if you cheat on this team, you'll cheat on your employer, you'll cheat on your family. You work hard for this team, you're going to work hard for your employer, you're going to work hard for your wife and kids one day. That's you right. know, I think our generation grew up hearing that all of the time. Yes. And now if a coach were to say that, they'd say, what do you mean by family? That's awful binary. <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> I mean, we live in crazy town. Yeah, and you know, yeah. and it's also always looking for shortcuts. That doesn't mean not that doesn't mean God doesn't want us to be efficient, but the shortcut uh, in ministry, you know, what can so happen in ministry, and I know uh, most of the people involved listening to this are involved in ministry to some extent. You can get so focused also on the doing of it that you forget your very first ever, uh, thing that you need to do, and that is the work, the liturgy, as we say, the work of the people is to spend time with Jesus. You know, you can get so caught up in doing God's work that you, you, hey, God, sorry, I'm busy. I'll see you later. I'm over here doing your work. And you're not being attentive to your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We're talking with uh, Jason Jones. What's your website again, Jason? TheGreatCampaign.org. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. 
Long Ride Home with Bear Wostick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, I'm so caught up when I talk with Jason that uh, there's these little promos I'm supposed to do at, at, at every segue uh, going into a, a new segment. I'm finally going to get around to doing one. i got to let you guys know our new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is at Sophia right now. There, we're getting, uh, getting it ready to be uh, released in September. So you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, to our web store and pre-order an autographed book. Or if you want to, you can go to Amazon and pre-order a book there or or to uh, or to Sophia and order it pre-order it there we'd love you to go we'd love it's a great gift for men and women to read uh, but it's a really particularly great book for young men uh, I think to read through and go through with their dads uh, and speaking of that our website deepadventure.com we also have Bears Man Cave which is a non Facebook type community that you become a part of where we talk story about what's going on in our lives and we encourage each other and and challenge each other, and uh, and there's some hold my beer moments uh, ch- shared on there too, and then we have our our our, our uh, school of manliness, which is uh, three uh, years worth of curriculum. That what's happening is this is something we go through as a group of men. Uh, one of those uh, one of those lessons, one of those 36 lessons each month. But what's beginning to really happen is now fathers who are part of the School of Manliness, will get a login for their sons who are, let's say, confirmation age or older, and they're going through the curriculum with their sons. The, the, the younger sons can't be part of the man cave, but they can go through um, the School of Manliness with their sons. We just had our last annual man cave meetup in, uh, in, uh, near Cocoa Beach, Florida, Melbourne, Florida, on the beach there, and over half of the men brought confirmation age sons with them, and it was really cool to see the the men uncle these younger men, and for these younger men to kind of wake up to the fact that their dad isn't the only one that's uh, totally uh, that wants to live a, a rich, challenging, deep life uh, and and walk with the Lord. We're talking with Jason Jones right now. As I look at Jason, he is looking down at his phone, and the reason why is because he's getting pinged uh, by people right now that that need his assistance. Uh, he works with uh, with uh, freeing people that are that are uh, entrapped in in sex in the sex uh, in being sex trafficked. He's working with people in the Middle East who uh, who were left behind when the United States left, trying to get them out, and and just with vulnerable people around the world. Jason Jones, um, tell me about what you you've just re- you know I'm I'm half Ukrainian and I'm actually half Norwegian, which makes me you know the the Ukraine was first settled by Vikings. That's why they're blonde, blue eyed. Ukrainian. So really, I'm um, 100% basically Ukrainian if you look at it that way. And I know you've been there several, you've been there recently and, 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 and often. Can you tell us what's going on there right now? Yeah, you definitely look very Ukrainian, for good, sure. Yes, yeah, super good looking. Yeah, super good looking. They are very good looking people. They're wonderful people. So, you know, I went to Ukraine actually in the very first weeks of the war um, because we had been running massive evacuation operations. And um, 
I was there actually to speak at a pro-life. This time, we have an 800-bed shelter. We partnered with Solve Care um, to get these shelters up, and they're running them. 800-bed shelters for girls, orphan girls that are that age mm. to be exploited. Um, we have a refrigerated truck that's been running insulin all over the country, and then we've been doing these evacuations, food drops, and other things. I'm also working with Brian, I'm sorry, Ryan Hendrickson of Tip of the Spear Landmine Removal. We purchased them trucks and robots to help them in their efforts to remove landmines. But this trip was in Kyiv, and it was a very special trip. I was invited by Chalice of Mercy, which is a Ukrainian-American Catholic apostolate, very Marian organization mm. that was running, has been running an orphanage in Zaporizhia, a Catholic orphanage um, for young, um, and the, and the very close to the border. In fact, Zaporizhia right now is where that that reactor is going to blow. And by the time this year is pray God that didn't happen, but it could have already happened and it'd be one of the greatest tragedies in the history of the human race. So um, I was invited by Chalice of Mercy to speak at a pro-life, pro-family conference. And while this conference was very important is the Russian propaganda machine has made a lot of headway in the conservative movement in the United States. It's quite embarrassing. Um, people like Tucker Carlson, who I respect, have been the, the the ones spreading kind of bizarre myths. Um, and I think it emanates from a frustration and distrust of the deep state. So it's true that NATO has been poking the bear. It's true we've been putting bait on the hook. It's true we want to avoid World War III at all costs. Um, it's true that the Biden family shook that country down like a, a grocer in Little Italy in 1964 uh, from the Cosa Nostra. That's all true. Um, that means the Ukrainian, it's true that the West is uh, trying to shove the LGBT ideology on this very faithful country. But none of that adds up to Putin's a good guy. And you hear a lot Amen. of these conservative talk Amen. on our yeah. side of the aisle, and they're deranged. They're really off base. Um, you know, only 17% of Russians believe in God. It's a godless country. The Russian Orthodox Church is nothing but an instrument of uh, the Russian Putin. state. Right. Yeah, it was the KGB at prayer. Um, and uh, they've used a lot of these Russian Orthodox churches to run, uh, initially in the early parts of the war, sabotage uh, operations and things like that. So you have a godless country. You have the history of the Holodomor, where Russia tried to wipe the Ukrainians off the face of the earth in the 1930s. Prior to that, Lenin... Yeah, my, my family fled that. Like 12 million, I think it was, Ukrainians were starved to death by... Uh... Stalin. The numbers are between 8 and 30 million. You know, in those days, it was just kind of hard to know. Right. And the, the, the New York Times and other media tried to cover it up. And it was a Welsh uh, journalist, Gareth Jones, who broke the story to the world. It ended up getting murdered by the KGB for his efforts. So this is the history. You know, 19, uh, I'm sorry, in 2014, Putin's advisor and brain, Alexander Dugan, said his goal was the ethnic cleansing of Ukrainians. So this is where we're at. We need to stand with the people of Ukraine, and they're doing a heroic effort. Um, I think everyone's shocked at how they have stalled the Russian army, and they're not just fighting Russia. You'll hear a lot of people on the right say, why are we sending the money? We're not sending the money. We're sending money to American corporations that make weapons. So yes, the military industrial complex is profiting, um, but no money's getting to Ukraine. The weapons are getting to Ukraine. But the Ukrainians are not just fighting Ukraine. They're fighting China and Iran. Not just fighting China. Russia, you mean? They're fighting China. I mean, they're not and Iran. just fighting. Yeah, the Ukrainians are fighting Russia, China, and Iran. These drones that are these kamikaze drones are um, with Chinese parts assembled in Iran and sent to Iran, uh, 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 Russia. The day or the week before the invasion, Russia and China signed an unlimited partnership. It said a friendship with no limits. So this country of 20 million God-fearing people, and Zelensky himself just stopped same-sex marriage from happening, that NATO or the West was shoving down their throat. And, um, and the Russians have trafficked hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian children that have just disappeared. So, so we as Catholics especially, I went to this pro-life, pro-family conference. Uh, bishops were there, patriarchs were there, rabbis were there. A young green, uh, a young special forces soldier for Ukraine gave a speech. You can read it at our website, thegreatcampaign.org. 
He was the leader of the pro-family movement of Ukraine prior to the invasion. He died on June 9th, 11 days after our conference pair. Mm. He was killed while working to liberate um, Eastern Ukraine from Russia. A good Greek Catholic man, young man, who was the leader of the traditional marriage and pro-family fight in Ukraine and died um, as a member of a special forces unit nine days after he spoke at this pro-family conference. So it was quite sorrowful. I say I learned more about my country when I travel the world. We have become very shallow. We don't need to get a lot of information. We don't need to trust its sources. Um, I do think on the right too, Barry, maybe this is going too deep into the rabbit hole. I think a lot of folks recognize correctly that the world progressive state and Russia are at war. And they think by siding with Russia against the world progressive state that in the United States, the administrative state is weaponizing the Department of Justice against us, like your friend, Mr. Hulk and others. The media is relentlessly lying to us. They somehow imagine that by selling the people of Ukraine out to Russia somehow helps our position against the world progressive state. But that's that's monstrous, actually. You're you're really hitting uh, hit. I hear that all around me. Uh, what you're saying is that we got to support Putin because of of the corruption in Ukraine and the and the progressiveness and it's it's um, there's no it's, progressive in Ukraine. Yeah. And is Russia not corrupt? You know, listen. You got you got you got twenty Burisma. seconds, Jason. You got twenty seconds. Yeah, the Burisma recordings were Hunter Biden shaking down a shaking down a Ukrainian. Right. We're the corrupt ones. Yeah, we're corrupting them. We're yeah. the ones with the rainbow flags everywhere. I was in Ukraine. I saw one rainbow flag. I mm. went all over the country. It was in the Canadian embassy. That's the only place I we, saw. We we love Jason Jones. Hey, Jason. Um, as soon as we hang up, I'd love to. I'll, I'll send you an email and let's get you back on the show again. We have got so much more to talk about. Yes, uh, sir. Talk with Jason Jones and your website is thegreatcampaign.org. If you want to fire up your people, get get connect with Jason. Invite invite him to come speak speak uh, speak to your group. Till next week, everybody. May the breath of the Holy Spirit. Aloha you. My wife has asked me to always do the sign of the cross in Hawaiian when we when we leave our show. Ma ke inoa o kamakua ke keke a me ke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Chihu. Chihu. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.